did today. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. My name is Jenna Nilo. I am the Director of Marketing and Outreach for Illinois Digital Educators Alliance. Um, before I begin, I just really want to thank our um, friends over at the Morton Arboretum for this fantastic session today. Um, everybody who's doing remote learning, I'm sure you guys are looking for different kinds of resources to engage your students. Um, and we thought this would be a fantastic one to bring to your attention. So today we've got Megan, Megan, and Annalisa with us. I'm going to let them introduce themselves in just a minute. Um, but before I, we begin, uh, let me just do the standard housekeeping um, that I do every week. Uh, so if you don't mind keeping yourself muted throughout the presentation today, and then also keeping your video off. Um, that means we won't hear dogs barking in the background, and then um, the spotlight video will be on the speakers themselves today. So um, if you could do that, that would be fantastic. Um, we do, however, welcome and encourage interaction throughout the presentation. Um, we do have three people here from the Morton Arboretum as well as myself. Um, Megan specifically will be um, monitoring the chat window and responding to you, answering questions, um, anything like that. But of course, um, of course, if you have questions, please put them in. Um, if you have answers for other people or suggestions and um, just want to interact with things that other people are asking, um, please do that. We want this to be a um, open session for um, you guys to get some good ideas out there. So definitely um, please use that chat feature. Um, at the end of the session today, I will pop back on and um, make sure that you have your link for the PDH for today. So if you are an Illinois educator looking for your PDH credit, um, I will put that link in the chat window at the end is it does require live attendance. If you're not an Illinois um, educator and you're just looking for um, your professional learning credit um, or completion certification, certificate, cert oh my goodness, say that 10 times fast, um, completion certificate, you can go ahead and do the same and we will forward you back the information that you need um, after you fill out the Google form um, that's linked there. So I think that's it. Oh, I am recording. Um, the session is already being recorded. So just an FYI and the recording and a copy of the chat file and the slide deck will all be shared with you via email tomorrow. So anybody who registered will get that email um, from me tomorrow and then it will also be posted on our website, but I'll go through all that at the end. So that's it for me. Without further ado, I'm going to zip myself up, and um, Megan, I'm going to turn things over to you. So thanks so much. Great. Well, um, hello, everyone. I hope everyone is having a nice afternoon. It's um, certainly beautiful weather outside, so I appreciate you joining um, us um, and not, you know, being outside um, for this for this hour, although I know it's very tempting. Um, I'm excited to share with you um, some new resources that we've launched um, this fall um, for this coming school year um, and give you a preview of some of those. Um, but before I get started, um, I want to um, introduce both myself and Megan Cool Horvin, um, who is our coordinator of school programs. Um, she is going to be moderating the chat. So um, really, if you just say Megan, you're going to get, um, you know, one of us in the chat. Um, and then I'll periodically check in with her as well um, so that, you know, if there's questions that should maybe be brought to the whole group, um, I can answer those live as well. Um, again, my name is Megan. I'm the manager of school and camp programs at the Arboretum. Um, so I work with our school field trip audience, our teacher professional development audience, um, our summer science camp program, um, our scout programs, um, and Megan Cool Horvin, who's the coordinator of school programs, helps run a lot of the on-site field trip programs. She does a lot of communication with teachers. And then she um, also helped um, develop a lot of these resources um, with our team of educators who also lead our field trip programs. Um, before I kind of go over what, you know, we'll cover in this webinar, I want to give you a preview of some of these resources um, so that you can kind of get a sense of um, what it is that we're going to um, cover and what it is that you're going to get a chance to see during the webinar. Um, so there's MK again. So we have a, a video to kind of introduce you to some of the content that we'll share throughout the course of this afternoon. Oop. And I already goofed. So hold on just a second. There we go. The Morton Arboretum offers several resources to educators this year, both while educators are teaching in person and teaching virtually. Virtual learning bundles, virtual outreach programs, 
Planted Podcast, Canopy Career Chronicles, and Field Trips. The Barton Arboretum is offering free virtual learning bundles for grades 1st through 8th based around grade level life science themes. All activities are aligned to next generation science standards and common core state standards in cross-curricular activities. Applicable activities include answer keys and standards aligned rubrics for easy assessment. Each bundle has a variety of introductory activities to introduce the topic and domain specific vocabulary. Included are short, in a nutshell, teaching videos with accompanying activities for students that are aligned to the topic. The pre recorded Walk with a Guide videos take students on a virtual trip to a section of the Arboretum, like the different woodlands, wetland, and prairie to learn more about the plants, animals, and abiotics that make up its ecosystem, and a variety of standards-aligned concluding activities are included and meant for educators to utilize in order to assess their students' understanding of the grade-level theme. All of these virtual learning bundles are free for educators at arborversity.mortonarb.org backslash educators and are best accessed using a computer or laptop. Whether educators are teaching in the classroom or online, they can take advantage of our virtual outreach programs via Zoom. These virtual outreach programs are an optional add-on component to the learning bundles as they align to the same next generation science standards and grade level life science themes. Students will engage in an hour-long call with an Arboretum Education Program Guide. During this program, students will be engaged with our lessons and up-close investigations of different life science artifacts, including pelts, skulls, microscopes, organisms, dissections, and much more. Each virtual outreach program is set up for 30 students with a nominal fee of $65. To register for your program, visit our website to fill out a registration form today. Planted, Finding Your Roots in STEM Careers is a podcast from the Morton Arboretum. The hosts interview experts from around the country in 18 episodes based around careers in plant science and horticulture. Each episode has a next generation science standards aligned activity found on our website. You can access this podcast on any podcast supported platform such as iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or you can listen online. Help your students learn more about the different careers in tree science and horticulture with the Canopy Career Chronicles. Students can take an online quiz to see which career might fit their interests best. Their quiz results help them learn more about their career choices with a graphic novel visual. Morton Arboretum also offers on-site field trips. These next generation science standards aligned programs are led by education program guides and are available this school year. Visit our website to check out our available programs and to fill out a registration form today. Okay, so that gives you a little bit of a preview of some of the things that um, I want to share with you today, some of the new resources and then also just existing resources um, that we have for, um, for K-12 education. So um, again, I'm going to give you an overview of new, the new resources. I want to actually show you some examples um, and show you what some of that content looks like. Um, I won't be able to show you all of it because there's a large volume and there's four different bundles, but I'll give you a kind of a preview of all of that. Um, I want to walk you through actually how to access that. So I know um, I was peeking in the chat a bit. I noticed somebody asked, will we get that link again? Everything is linked in this slideshow. And again, I'm going to actually walk you through how you'll access that, um, how you'll access the bundles themselves. Um, we do have virtual um, programs. Um, these are 
um, Zoom-based programs. Um, I want to share some information about that. It's an optional add-on. Um, it is with one of our education program guides, and so there is a fee associated with that, but I'll share some details about that as well. Um, and then share just some other um, related K-12 digital resources, um, ones that we've had previously that align to our field trip programs, but might now, um, you know, you may be interested as well um, and share those with you in addition. So um, we previewed these a bit um, in, that, in that short clip, but um, I wanna talk first about the virtual bundles that we've developed. Um, and I say bundles because they're not just a group of activities. Um, there's a lot of different types of activities and a lot of different um, kind of components in each one. Um, so they are grade specific. Um, they include, as I mentioned before, um, activities, videos, lessons, labs, um, and um, they're aligned to next generation science standards. In some cases, if they're a writing um, or reading activity, we've aligned them to common core standards as well. Um, and it just kind of depends on what the activity is for that. Um, and they are organized into four chunks. Um, so we have um, one for grades um, two, one and two about seeds and growth, um, one about life cycles for grades three and four, um, a focus on energy and ecosystems in grades five and six, um, plant growth and reproduction for grades um, seven and eight. Um, and we are currently working on both pre-K to kindergarten as well as um, grades, um, high school bundles as well. Those will be coming soon and I'll kind of give you a preview as to what's included in those and, and the topics on what those will cover just so you know what's coming um, in early 2021. Um, and they're organized into kind of those components that you got to preview in the video. There's introductory activity that builds vocabulary and background knowledge and then there's following content videos. Um, we also uh, we are offering field trip programs, but we recognize that you may not be able to travel on site. And so we have kind of some virtual hikes that are videos also that are included in those bundles, as well as concluding activities. And sometimes these are lab activities. Sometimes they're assessments um, that contain rubrics, or sometimes they're um, like an, a mini experiment um, as well. So I want to give you, I'm going to jump right in with our introductory activities. Um, and this will kind of give you an idea of kind of the volume for each of these types. So for each grade level, there's um, at least two, in some cases, um, three activities um, per um, grade level bundle. Um, they are in a variety of formats. Um, and so we wanted to include more than one because um, some of them might work best if you're in a remote format. Some might work best in a hybrid format because they're, um, more of an activity that you would print and distribute or cut apart and kind of manipulate. Um, and so we wanted to, you know, make sure that they worked um, because a lot of people are teaching in different formats this fall um, and that might even change over the course of your school year. And so we wanted to make sure that these were um, flexible as well. Um, so I want to kind of give you, again, I won't be going over all of the activities in each of the grade level blocks, but kind of give you a sense of um, kind of what these look like and what some of the features are. So as I mentioned before, um, almost all of the introductory activities in some capacity focus on vocabulary. So there's um, introductory to kind of build background knowledge um, and give students an, an opportunity to kind of um, get familiar with some of the content and terminology that might be focused in the video or in the um, outreach program or in the virtual um, hike as well. Um, we, some of them also are in kind of like a um, crack the code, escape, um, or kind of solve this, um, not solve this problem, but um, kind of figure out this puzzle um, type format. Um, and so they, they might may be able to be done um, remotely or um, like our adaptation sort, um, it is more of a, a manipulative, um, and so that may work best in um, a more in-person or hybrid setting um, as well. Um, and then um, some of them can be done completely remote. So it can be a scavenger hunt um, that you send students on to do this fall um, or this spring um, where they are um, looking for things in their neighborhood or um, in their um, in their community. Um, and all of these selections or examples that I pulled were from the um, first and second grade, uh, I'm sorry, yes, first and second grade seeds um, um, and growth bundle. 
So that is our introductory activities. Um, before I jump into the in a nutshell videos, MK, I want to touch base and see if we have any questions that you want me to address in the chat before I jump into our next section of the bundle. Nope, nothing yet. Okay, great. Then I'll just keep on going. So um, in addition to the um, activities, um, there's also some videos and each um, bundle group has um, a couple videos kind of depending on the topic. Um, and then um, they also have some um, supplemental activities as well. I wanna give you a preview so you get an idea of um, what these videos look like. I will say that they vary in length. Some are um, five, closer to five minutes, some are closer to 10 minutes. Um, obviously it just kind of depends on the topic. Um, a little, some of our more complex topics are a little bit longer the video, but the goal is to kind of help um, after you've introduced kind of and built some background knowledge, kind of share um, some additional information. And all of them were um, filmed on site, so they are um, Illinois specific, um, but they're not necessarily location specific, if that um, makes sense. And um, yeah, so this kind of gives you an idea of what the um, topics that all of them are cover from everything from life cycles to um, plant adaptations to ecosystems. We are generally sticking within the life science strand of next gen. Um, and with that, I'm going to share with you um, video episode number nine, uh, which is actually in more than one of our bundles. Um, I think it's um, highlighted in both the um, fifth and sixth energy and ecosystems, as well as um, the life cycles bundle as well. Um, but I'll share that with you so you can get a preview of that content as well. The rotting log of a dead tree lies in the woods. The dead leaves cover the ground in the fall. Or maybe you find the stinky body of a dead possum. Yuck! So now what happens to them? Will they just lay there forever? Of course not! Decomposers, or nature's recyclers, get to work. When plants and animals die in nature, nature gets to work recycling the stuff from their dead bodies so that new living ones, especially plants, can use it again. All the living things are made up of parts that have been used before by others. But for the living things to use those materials, the dead things have to be decomposed or broken down into their smallest bits in order to return heat energy and carbon dioxide to the atmosphere and nutrients like nitrogen back into the soil. Decomposing is done by the FBI, a variety of many different small living things. Fungi, such as mushrooms, bacteria, and invertebrates, like worms, insects, and other bugs that use the dead material for food. Nature needs lots of these small creatures in order to break down large bodies into the smaller parts needed to start over. Some of them work very quickly, but others take really long. The bodies of living things are made up of tiny particles of important chemicals like carbon, nitrogen, and water. Kind of like a lot of little Lego pieces put together to create an organism. But nature can't make any new pieces or buy new ones at the store like you can. Nature can only take apart and rearrange the pieces it already has on Earth. That's what the decomposers do. They take apart the Lego pieces. Dead plants are mostly taken apart, or decomposed, by fungi. Long, thin threads, called hyphae, soften the plants so fungi can eat them. They like it moist, but not too wet, warm and dark, growing mainly underground or under dead leaves and tree bark. Many fungi are involved in breaking down and eating the dead plant materials. Some very quickly eat leaves, others more slowly eat twigs and stems, and others very, very slowly eat bark and wood. 
Different fungi use different chemicals in their bodies to break down the different parts. We often see mushrooms grow on dead logs or on the ground, but there's a lot more going on. Fungi we can't see inside the logs or under the ground eat away the wood and dead materials. Some fungi grow for hundreds of meters underground connected to each other in the tree roots. Insects, especially beetles and their larvae, help by eating soft wood just under the bark and making holes and spaces for more fungi, other insects like termites and ants, and worms and millipedes to get inside to eat even more wood. The wood dust falls to the ground, soil bacteria eats more of it, and worms mix it with their body waste to form soil. The decomposing wood dust sends nitrogen into the ground and carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. In a forest where there is more water, decomposing can be fast. In a wetland, it's much faster, and the nutrients get used right away by new plants. On a prairie, it's much drier and there is less fungi. Decomposing is mostly done by bacteria in the soil. It's much slower, and old roots and other leftover plant materials can make the soil tough. But both natural and man-made fires sometimes speed up decomposing without having to wait for the bacteria. Underwater in a river, marsh, or wetland, without oxygen, bacteria do most of the work decomposing dead plants and animals. They have to do it much more slowly, and it's also a lot smellier. When animals die, the soft parts of their bodies are first eaten by things we call scavengers. Animals like crows, vultures, maybe possums. Ants, and also maggots, yuck, also eat some of the soft parts of the body. Then bacteria, not fungi, living in or on the body start rotting it, making it smelly and changing its color from digesting the body for food. These bacteria are very different from the ones that eat plants, and we don't know all of them. The waste from all these live eaters will put carbon and nitrogen from the dead bodies back into the air and soil for new plants to use. But those important chemicals have to be broken into their smaller pieces for the plants to use to make new food and grow new bodies. Temperature and weather matter for all the decomposers. The wetter and warmer it is usually means faster decomposition. Things decompose slower in the winter or in a dry place like the desert. All the decomposers use the dead materials for food for energy. While they're using that energy, their bodies often give off heat. Sometimes decomposing plants and animals feel warm. Decomposing is the important way that nature uses in order to recycle the material from dead plants and animals to provide material for new plants to grow and to feed new animals. It takes a lot of different decomposers like bacteria, fungi, and invertebrates, which are specially adapted to help no matter where in the world they're doing it. Would you like to hunt for decomposers in your own backyard? Download the Decomposer Dichotomous Key activity and start discovering the invertebrates near you. Okay, so um, the invitations that are included in that video, again, I don't know if I mentioned this, but the um, videos are created um, with uh, some of our education program guides. So if any of you have attended um, a field trip uh, or one of our guided programs or one of our outreach programs or we come into the school, um, those are the same educators um, who lead those programs assisted in um, hosting or, or being a part of those videos. So you may see a familiar face if you've participated in any of those programs. Um, but I wanted to, at the end of that video, um, I know that one is a, it's kind of in the medium length. It's a little over six minutes. Um, I wanted to make sure we got all the way to the end because every single one of these um, videos at the end highlights a different activity that's also in the bundle. And for this particular activity, um, it's a dichotomous key where kids can look um, and do kind of their own decomposer dig, which is something that we do on field trip programs. And then um, using the dichotomous key kind of identify what it is. Um, I do want to mention too that um, when applicable, um, all of these activities have answer keys. 
So um, you may not know what the students are going to find, but at least gives an example of um, what this should look like completed or, um, you know, gives students both an example and teachers an idea of what to look for um, for this activity as well as many, um, many others as well. Um, again, um, I kind of highlighted here to um, what activities um, are highlighted or linked to each of these videos. Um, a couple of videos are used in more than one bundle. Um, so for example, the photosynthesis bundle I think is um, highlighted in both the fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth bundle. Um, or plant adaptations is in the um, first and, I'm sorry, the um, third and fourth, as well as the fifth and sixth bundle. And so there are actually two different activities then um, to make sure that it, um, the activity aligns with the grade levels um, that it's um, intended for. So there, um, depending on the topic, there may be more than one follow-up activity um, for, for some of these videos. Um, this also kind of gives you an idea too um, of what videos, um, you know, they're all by episode and there are um, a couple of episodes you'll notice like six, seven, and 10 that are not linked um, um, because they haven't been created yet. They're in process and those will be coming as part of the bundles for both pre-K and high school that will be released um, in 2021. So as I mentioned before, um, this is kind of an overview in each grade level bundle, which um, these in a nutshell videos um, we've kind of highlighted. Um, the one thing I haven't mentioned yet is that I'm giving you this content in a specific sequence. So, um, you know, introductory um, activities, videos, concluding activities, but honestly, these can be used um, in any order, however you want um, to use them, especially if, you know, you teach different grade levels, um, and you want to adapt something, you can use components of these, um, you know, in different, um, different orders. And you'll see when we go through the registration process um, that you'll actually have access to all of them at one time. So, you know, even if you want to use something from grades one and two, as well as, um, you know, three and four, um, you know, you can kind of mix and match. We've just given you a sequence to kind of follow along so that there, if you wanted to do the whole thing, there's a, there's a logical progression as well. Okay, I'm going to jump into some of our other videos that are included. Um, but before we do that, I'll check in real quick with MK. Are there any questions in the chat that I should address to, uh, to the whole group? Um, just a question about how much do the bundles cost? Oh, um, that is like my favorite question to answer because they are free. Um, so these um, bundles are completely free. I'm going to walk you through how to access them because there is a registration process involved, but that's just so that, because um, especially with some of the videos and some of the activities, they are um, large in file size. And so um, we were using kind of a system in order to catalog them and um, kind of neatly package them for you. And so um, you do have to register for them, but, um, but they are completely free. So um, with that, I will be checking in periodically with MK as well, but I want to share with you some of the other videos, and these are not necessarily specific to a grade level, so they are included, or they're kind of linked to every single grade level group. Um, the intent here is that um, we are running on-site field trip programs, but we recognize that um, some people may, you know, be less able to come on a field trip this school year, um, given um, the, the current state of things. Um, and so we wanted to highlight um, kind of a, a walk in different parts of the Arboretum with one of our educators where they can highlight um, some unique features there or some different um, parts of that ecosystem. Um, also to give students context to some of the um, topics that are um, covered in the activities. Um, and so currently um, we have three videos um, that are kind of in this virtual visit type theme. Um, and they highlight three different ecosystems, um, the three main ecosystems that we have at the Arboretum. So we have a wonderful Schulenberg Prairie. Um, if you are, you know, close to the Chicagoland region and you visited, you may have um, spent some time on the prairie. It's a um, very large restored area where sections of it um, were wind dispersed and other sections were actually hand planted. Um, and so that video highlights different plants on the prairie and also kind of um, gives a walk through of that, um, of that type of ecosystem. Um, another um, virtual 
walk with a guide is of Lake Marmo and it's highlighting that wetland ecosystem. Um, but Lake Marmo is on one of the man-made lakes that we have, or um, it's called Lake Ma Marmo, but honestly, it's a little bit more than a, of a pond. Um, but it is a, a mud basin pond that is, um, was um, created um, when the Arboretum was um, developed um, and is, is named after Margaret Morton, which was um, Joy Morton's wife. Um, and so that is, um, that video kind of highlights that ecosystem and kind of walks around the lake while talking about different ecosystem components. And of course, um, we are the, we are an arboretum, so we can't get away from highlighting trees um, in a woodland ecosystem. Um, and this particular walk um, visits um, one of my favorite parts at the Arboretum, which um, is Hemlock Hill um, near um, Lake Marmo again, um, but it looks at both a um, conifer um, woodland as well as a deciduous woodland um, in that hike as well. Okay, so um, the last component in these bundles are concluding activities. Um, and again, there's a variety in, of these. Some of them are more of an assessment um, and contain a rubric. Some of them are more of an experiment or an inquiry, um, and then others are kind of in that escape room type, um, you know, solve this puzzle, solve this misery, mystery, um, and they do kind of highlight different um, specific parts of the Arboretum in kind of like an investigation type format where students have to find information um, related to these topics and kind of like crack the code to, to kind of solve the mystery, and that's kind of how they're um, set up. Um, so I wanted to highlight um, kind of two different types of those activities that I mentioned. Um, in the, uh, I want to say this is fifth and sixth um, bundle, um, there's two, there's like building a solar oven as well as um, creating a hot water heater, kind of a lab experiment. Um, and then um, in the um, third and fourth grade, I'm sorry, first and second grade bundle on seeds and growth, um, there's a writing activity. So they make some observations about um, seeds and seed parts, and then um, there's a writing activity that they do, but included in the bundle um, is a rubric that aligns, um, that talks about both, it's a standards-based rubric, so it has both Common Core um, writing as well as Next Generation Science Standards as well. Um, and there's um, kind of some um, modified versions too, so that if you have um, students who learn at different levels, um, that activity itself is actually um, it's um, tiered um, too. Okay, so I know this question has already come up. How do we find them? Where do we get them? Um, you know, where is that link? And so I want to walk you through um, where you can find the information and then also kind of how to access them. So um, on our website, um, under Learn and Experience, um, we have a lot of different programs. Um, but in, you know, what is normally our school groups section, um, at the very bottom, because it's virtual and they're alphabetized, um, you'll find the virtual outreach and bundles page. And this page actually includes an overview video, um, different from the one I showed you earlier. Um, it also has a video that I'll show you on the next slide that kind of walks through how to register to receive these. Um, there's also information about each individual grade level bundle, so you can kind of pick to see maybe which one you would be most interested in. And then um, if you're interested in that additional add-on, that option um, for the, the um, fee-based um, uh, outreach, um, there's information on that section as well. I do want to point out um, something that's listed below each bundle. It is recommended um, that when you're registering for one of these bundles, you do that from a desktop or laptop computer. Um, they um, were using a um, portal that these are saved in, and it's not as um, well optimized on a tablet. Um, so we do recommend um, that, especially as we walk through the next slide to kind of show you how to register. Um, that's what it will look like uh, if you're doing it from a desktop or a laptop computer. Um, and so I want to share with you that process, and then I'm actually going to come out of the presentation and show you um, kind of live um, what those bundles um, look like. The Morton Arboretum has developed several new and free digital resources for educators to download by request. These virtual resource bundles are divided by grade level and all activities are aligned to the next generation science standards 
and in some cases, Common Core State Standards as well. To access these resources, you will go to arborversity.mordenarb.org slash educators. From here, you can learn more details about each of the bundles by clicking on their names. For now, let's take a closer look at the virtual bundle for first grade. From here, you can read a description of the bundle, as well as preview some of the content that is contained within. As you can see, there's a wide variety of activities, including teacher guides, introductory activities to introduce the topic and domain-specific vocabulary, teaching videos with guided virtual tours of different habitats, as well as concluding activities. To access this content, click on the Enroll button. As a new user, you will need to register for an account with Arborversity. Click on the Register link. You will need to fill out the required information. Once you've filled out all the information, click on the Register button. You'll see that a confirmation page pops up saying registration request has been sent. Click on the link in your email. Once you click on the link, you'll receive a pop up saying that the registration process has been completed and click on Sign In. You'll need to enter the username and password that you just created and click the Sign In button. You'll receive confirmation that you've been enrolled successfully into the bundle. Click on Start Learning Now. On the right hand side of the screen, you'll see a list of all the materials organized by folder. Click on the folder to view and or download any of the activities. If you would like to participate in one of our virtual outreach school programs, you can fill out the registration form and one of our team members will follow up with you to schedule a live Zoom meeting with a Morton Arboretum Education Program Guide for your class. If you would like to enroll in any of the other bundles, you can always click on the My Educator dashboard and enroll from here. For any technical issues, please email us at arborversity at mortonarb.org. Okay. So this is that dashboard um, that you just saw in the video, and I'm actually going to um, kind of go into um, the dashboard itself so you can kind of see um, and click through what, what that looks like. Um, as I mentioned before, um, when you register for one, you will actually um, have access. All four bundles will be in your catalog. Um, so for example, um, I saw when we were um, people were first being admitted in the meeting that um, a couple of you teach third and fourth grade. So if that was a bundle you were interested in, oh, there it goes. Oh, hold on just a second. Let me log in and then reshare. I thought I had it saved. Okay. All right. And then let me reshare. Okay. Hmm. This is not being friendly to me today. There we go. Okay. Let's sit down. Okay. So here we go. So um, this is one of the that platform, and I will be honest with you. This um, platform that we're using to host these bundles is also, if you've ever taken an online class at the Arboretum, it's very similar to that format. Um, most of the most of what you'll be doing in here is not necessarily completing it like a course, but going in to download and access these materials. So um, just as um, the video mentioned, you can click on a particular activity. So if this was the one you wanted, um, you would then um, just download it right from that window. If you want to get a sense of what it is or what standards it reaches before you download it, that information is included in here as well. Um, the videos themselves are not included as files, um, but they are, there's a um, one sheet um, that is included that gives all the links to them. Um, and I'll show that on, an, on another slide so you can kind of see what that looks like as well. Um, but they're um, on like an unlisted YouTube account so that you have access to all of them, but you don't need to save, um, you know, a lot of 
um, file dense videos on your computer, um, but you'll still have access to them via link. Um, the one thing I do want to point out in here as well, um, in addition to the um, the activities, the pre-recorded videos. Um, there's also um, information on um, a survey and we would love, um, these are new for us. We um, have not launched content in this format um, yet. This is the first um, school year we've done that. So we'd love to get a, your feedback on how you are using um, the bundles themselves. And so while I was in here, I thought I would um, kind of show you how that, that um, where that survey is as well. Um, I'm going to jump back into um, the slideshow real quick, or the deck. Um, so again, this is that toolbar on the side where you'll kind of be able to see all of the um, content. Um, and then um, it, it organizes it in those chunks that we mentioned, introductory, um, teaching, concluding, um, virtual hike, and then um, those registration forms. Um, they are all included as both um, Word documents and PDF formats. So if you wanted to, um, you know, make your own changes or customize for them your class, you can do that um, by downloading the um, document format. Um, there is a, so once you register, you do have 90 days um, to get the content you want before um, your kind of, your time in um, this platform will expire. Um, you will be prompted and reminded um, to um, go back in and, and get the content before your expiration time comes up. Um, but I do want to mention that because um, you'll want to make sure that you go in and get the content that you want out of it. Um, you know, even if it's something that you maybe plan on using later in the year. Um, I highlighted this when we um, kind of walked through the, the live version of the bundles. Um, if there are videos, they can also be viewed um, in the portal. Um, but like I mentioned before, um, so that you don't have to download huge video files, um, you'll want to download this um, one sheet, which has a link to all the videos. Um, and again, this will be updated again in 2021 as we add um, the additional um, in a nutshell teaching videos for the high school and um, pre-K K um, bundles that will launch at that time too. Okay. I think I covered most of these. Um, I highlighted the survey as well, just to make sure that, um, you know, we, this is new. We want to know how these are, how these are working for you. And then um, it helps us plan for the future as we think about developing more bundles. Um, questions, MK, before I jump into the outreach um, component? Um, nope, you hit upon everything. Okay, great. Um, so this is an optional um, portion, but because um, it does uh, have staff attached to it who are um, conducting the call live, there is a fee associated with it. Um, there is, you can, this is kind of, again, you can do some of this in any order, kind of based on the needs of your unit, your curriculum, but um, this is essentially where we recommend it, um, you know, kind of the sequence. You do some introduction, some pre-recorded videos, and then if you wanted to kind of enhance the content um, with a live call, um, it would be great to do that before you kind of wrap up with your assessment or your concluding activities. So um, as I mentioned before, we are offering um, on-site field trip programs with COVID safety precautions. However, that might not be feasible for you in the current um, format and structure that you're teaching. Um, so we are offering programs via Zoom. Um, the topics are, you know, the four options are the four bundle options. So they are tied directly to that content. Um, we can conduct these in remote, hybrid, or in-person formats. So, um, and we've already done that a little bit already because these launched in um, September. Um, so if you were um, teaching in person or on a hybrid day, you know, you can log in your one computer and have all the students there. Um, you can also share with them the um, Zoom link that we would provide and students can individually um, log into the call. Um, and so they, they fit in a number of formats. They also, I will say, um, they also fit in, you know, whatever stage um, of, um, you know, Restore Illinois we're in. So even if we move into a different um, phase, uh, we'll be able to still conduct these types of programs. 
Um, during the program, the guide interacts with students, they ask questions. Um, sometimes they do that live, sometimes they do that in a chat. Um, they'll also be displaying visuals, seeds, pelts, skulls, leaves, very similar content to what we would take on a um, field trip program. Obviously, we have a different theater and a different um, you know, background that we're also speaking to, but um, some of the similar um, visuals in this format as well. And then there are some up close videos of specimens. Um, I know in the energy and ecosystems um, um, outreach program for fifth and sixth grade, there's a worm video um, in the seventh and eighth grade um, uh, plant growth and reproduction video or, um, program. There's a flower dissection. So it just kind of depends on um, you know, what the topic is, kind of what's included in that, in those videos. Um, and then again, I know we've mentioned this before, there is a, a fee for those different programs and it does, um, it is able to be facilitated for up to 30 students. Um, we do have some other resources. These are some of our evergreen resources that always um, exist and are available on our website. Um, one of them that is both on the website and actually in the bundles themselves too is our Tremendous Tree Story writing activities. So um, in 20, oh, I'm still going to get this year wrong, but I believe it was 2018, the Arboretum partnered with um, Open Lands in order to kind of help facilitate a platform for people to talk about trees that meant a lot to them and kind of share stories around trees. Um, and we thought that students can share stories um, about trees in their neighborhood in kind of a writing activity. Um, and so that is um, organized by grade level. And then there are grade specific standards-based rubrics. So there's a lot of these. There's one for third grade, fourth grade, uh, I'm sorry, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, um, middle school and high school. And they're all aligned to those specific writing standards for Common Core. Um, those are in the bundles, but they're also um, on the Arboretum's website, and I've, I've linked it on the next slide. Um, our Canopy Career Chronicles and Planted Podcast, you saw a preview of those in the introductory video. Um, one of them is audio content. They're um, a series of 18 different episodes um, where we interview experts from around the country. Um, myself and Jessica Turner-Scoff, who's our um, triologist on site, a cool job title that is. Um, we're the co-hosts of that podcast. Um, there's also supplemental resources that go along with every single episode. Um, and then kind of an extension of that is the Canopy Career Chronicles, um, which is also an extension of our Gateway to Tree Science, which is an on-site exhibit, um, but it explores different um, careers in plant science and horticulture in a very visual um, way um, for, for, it's intended for middle school and high school students as well. Um, so those are some um, evergreen resources that are always available um, if, you know, those, if that content aligns um, more to um, what you're teaching this school year. Um, coming soon, I did mention that I would um, talk about this towards the end, but I kept kind of hinting to it throughout the course of the webinar. Um, we are having two additional bundles that will be added um, in um, early um, 2021. Um, for pre-K and K, the, um, for preschool and um, kindergarten, um, the theme is plant and season, plant season and pollinators bundle. Um, there'll be some additional um, videos that are added as well as activities. Um, and then for high school, the focus will be photosynthesis and restoration, those two cellular processes. Um, and, and there'll be some additional in videos that are created as well as introduction and concluding activities around those two topics. Um, so more is coming in these, um, you know, there's a lot of great free resources now and there's more coming down the line, um, but wanted to give you an idea if you do teach any of those grade levels kind of what's coming or maybe you, um, you know, teach six to eighth grade, but you cover photosynthesis. And so you know that you can probably adapt some of this uh, material as well. That is um, certainly true. Um, again, I've mentioned this, but we really want to hear your feedback. So if you do utilize any of this content, please, please, please um, tell us how you used it, um, what was um, most beneficial to you. Um, you know, we just want to hear from you so we can continue as we plan for additional content, make sure that this is, um, you know, what you need and we can continue to provide resources for you this school year and next. Um, that align to align to what you're teaching. 
Um, and I did because that we're sharing the slide deck. I wanted to make sure that you had links to everything. Um, so everything is um, on live and the links are active so that um, if there's anything you specifically want, um, you know, you can, I put it all in one place for you so that you don't have to search for it throughout the course of the um, deck as well. Um, I am so excited um, to share this content with you. Major kudos to um, uh, Megan um, Cool Horbin, who helped develop and coordinate a lot of this content, as well as Annalisa um, Burke, who's also joining me from the Arboretum, who helped um, us put this together in this platform. Um, we hope that this information and this um, content is useful for you this school year. Um, I was a teacher prior to being at the Arboretum, and I know that um, this school year presents a number of challenges. I can only imagine, uh, and we're happy that we can provide um, some level of support um, for you this school year, given that it is just such a different, um, different format and, and different um, resources needed. So I hope this was useful. I hope you found something that um, you know you can take away and take into your classroom, whether that's hybrid, remote, or in person. Um, before I turn it uh, back over to Jenna, um, MK, did we have any other questions or things that came up in the chat that I didn't address? Yes, there was one question. I think this question is um, more for Annalisa. Um, somebody asked that once those 90 days are up, does that mean they can't get back into Arborversity and access the bundles at all? Um, I don't know if Annalisa wants to take that question and touch upon that um, just a bit. Sure. So you can, but you'll need to unenroll from the course and then re-enroll. So it's kind of like resetting the clock because um, like Megan had mentioned before, there's certain reminders that go out. So then, you know, um, once you've enrolled, you'll get the little welcome email um, and confirming that you're uh, in that particular bundle. And then, you know, a month later, there'll be a little reminder about like, hey, if you haven't, um, gotten a chance to check out what the virtual outreach programs are like. Here's another option. And then when you, it's like, I think set to be seven days before your expiration of the bundle is up, then it'll say, hey, as a reminder, you'll only have seven more days. So then at that point, if you're like, oh gosh, I didn't get to this in my class, um, you can always unenroll and then re-enroll and then you got another 90 days, if that makes sense. Excellent. Thank you, Annalise. I thought I knew the answer to that, but it's always helpful to have somebody who is in Arborversity and in the learning management platform, um, you know, make sure that I am correct in my assumption. Um, any other questions or things that came up that um, we should address before we turn it back over to Jenna? Um, nothing else came up, just to I remind them that the bundles are free and once you register for a bundle, you have access to all of the bundles. Yep. Great. All right. Well, thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, you guys. That was absolutely phenomenal. Um, better than I anticipated. So thank you. That is such amazing resources. And as you said, um, I know you said you were a teacher before, so was I, and I can only imagine um, how helpful this would be in the classroom today. Um, so definitely, um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, as I go on, if you guys do have any other questions, go ahead, throw those in the chat. Um, in the meantime, I just put in there um, the link for your PDHs today. So um, if you are looking for your PDH, go ahead and use that link. Oops, did I share the wrong screen? Which screen do you see of mine? Does it say Webinar Wednesday? Webinar Wednesday, building students from... Good, okay, good. My, my whole thing just went blank, so. Um, so definitely, if you're looking for um, that, uh, the PDH, please go ahead and click that link and fill out that form. Um, I also put a link in there for our Webinar Wednesday um, website. That's where we post all of our videos um, from our previous webinars. So tomorrow morning, you'll find this webinar there, as well as anything that we've done over the last year, over a year, I don't remember how long we've been doing these. Um, so tons of great uh, resources in there besides just um, what you've seen today. Um, so you can definitely go back and look at that. Um, and then also, if you're looking for um, other IDEA events, we host webinars um, almost every single week, every single Wednesday. 
Um, and then we also have workshops and other great things. So you can always find all of our um, IDEA events at that link there, um, Illinois, ideaillinois.org slash calendar. Um, like I said, this recording, the, um, the slide deck and the chat file will all be emailed to everybody who registered for today's webinar. So you guys are here, which means you registered. So you will be um, getting that uh, email from me tomorrow. And then just wanted to tell you about some of our upcoming events. Next Wednesday, um, we have Building from Student Strengths in the COVID Era with Dr. Amy Heinke. So um, she's going to be talking to us about um, some of the issues with teaching um, during COVID. So please join us for that. Um, you can use that calendar link to go ahead and register. That's another free webinar that we have. Um, the following, what is that? I think it's the following day, actually. Um, we have one of our IDEA workshops. So these are hour and a half workshops. Um, they do have a minim minimal fee, um, but you get some one-on-one -on -one coaching with our Director of Professional Learning. This one's the Amazing Race of Learning and it focuses on digital citizenship. So as we near um, our digital, citizen digital Citizenship Week, which is actually the following week, um, this may be a good uh, workshop for you to um, get some ideas for activities to do in your classroom, be it remote or um, in person. And then finally, um, IdeaCon is coming up this February. If you haven't heard that, that um, about it yet, um, we are looking for presenter proposals right now. So submit your proposal by October 19th. And if you go to our website um, under events, you can look for IdeaCon 2021 and um, there'll be the link there that then you can um, submit a presenter proposal. So uh, we would love to hear what everybody has to say. Um, so please take a look at that as well. So without, with all of that, 